Hey guys, James here with Waterford Business Solutions. And as we're approaching the end of the year, I wanted to start a quick little mini series on a few of the different types of investments that you can do for you, your business, and your employees to help to save for retirement, help to maybe reduce some tax liability here and there, and basically just put yourself in a better future position. There's a lot of different ones out there, and over the next three weeks, we're gonna kinda of cover all of the different main ones. There are a few others out there. We're gonna get into some traditional and Roth IRAs. We'll get into um, solo Ks in future and everything, but we're going to definitely go through and talk about the main ones over the next three weeks. I invite you, if you haven't already, to go ahead and follow and turn notifications on for our channel. That way you get notified over these next weeks of these videos coming out and can follow along with us to make a decision on what works best for you, for your business, and for your financial goals. I want to start with probably the easiest one, and quite frankly, by end of year, the only one that you'll likely be able to set up by end of year. The other ones are going to have some requirements and or date requirements that are going to prevent you from being able to set them up. But a SEP IRA or a simplified employee pension plan is super easy to set up as there's very, very little government regulation, legal regulation, or anything like that. Simply, you just need to go um, work with the broker, set up a um, SEP account. For you, if you've got employees, you can set up a SEP account for them. You should set up a SEP account for them too, and that way everything is taken care of there. Um, it's really very simple. There's no regulation on um, kind of who is participating and things like that. The regulation is very, very simple. For 2024, you've just got to be a minimum of 21 years old and you have to have a minimum of $750 to contribute um, or to participate. That doesn't mean that you as the employer have to contribute at that. Those are just the requirements for them to even participate in your SEP IRA. You as the employer can set other requirements and other things in place. Obviously, we wanna make sure that we keep everything fair there and keep it logical for all employees. We don't want you being the only one getting any benefit out of this. That can raise some questions and concerns during an audit. But as long as it's a reasonable fairness across the board, SEPs are very simple there. It allows you to have a lot of control over um, your own investments. So the business isn't controlling this as much as the individuals. And it's super easy for them to take this and move it to wherever they want to. And any business can set up a SEP, a LLC, a sole proprietorship, a corporation, an S Corp, all of those could have a SEP IRA and using that as their retirement investing fund. So super, super broad, super, super easy to use there, which is the great benefit of using and working with the SEP there. Where SEPs are a little tricky um, it is really going to depend on your opinion. Unlike any of the other options that we have out here, SEPs are solely a traditional version of an IRA. Traditional meaning that it's tax deferred. Whatever money you put into it today is not going to be taxed today. But when you pull that money out, along with all of the gains, all of the interest, everything that it's earned over the past 5, 10, 30, however many years it's invested, you will be paying taxes then. So it's not always the best tax strategy for clients to only be involved in a SEP IRA or a traditional IRA because we're not taking into account what your future tax brackets may be. So that is one downside to a SEP IRA. However, SEP IRAs do allow you to put a lot of money into it. There's a maximum of $69,000 that you could put into a SEP IRA for 2024. With a 
sole proprietorship or when you're a sole proprietorship, i.e. you don't have any other employees or anything like that, if you've got any wages, you are limited to 25% of the profits or wages that the business earns minus the SEP contribution to your contribution limit. So it gets a little more complicated here. Um, it's not quite as clear cut, not quite as straightforward as everything there. Um, like we have with other ones, it's not just clear cut number amounts or anything like that. But it's going to be, again, take your profits for your company, subtract out your SEP IRA contribution, and then multiply that by 25%. That is going to be kind of your limit of what you're allowed to do there for a contribution. There's nothing super crazy or super difficult there at all about it. Another huge benefit for SEP IRAs, like I said, the employee controls a lot of this. So they can easily go and if they leave your employee employee, they can go and take it with them with no issues there. You for the employer though, have a benefit of there is no minimum required contribution. You don't have to put in 2% or 3% or anything like that. You don't have to do matching. You don't have to do any of that. You just have to have it open. Um, if you're having a bad year and you don't have the money to contribute, you don't have to contribute. If you're having a great year and you've got a ton of money, you can max that out as much as you can. So super, super easy, super straightforward there with what you can do and it gives you a ton of flexibility as a business owner to make sure that you are providing for retirement, you're providing for these employees, but you're not harming yourself or your business in the meantime. Now, from an employee perspective, SEPs aren't always as attractive because while you offer it, there is no 100% guarantee. There's no legal backing, even if you've got it in your employee handbook, because you could always say, well, it was a bad year, we're not gonna contribute. Most people who have SEP IRAs in their employee handbook are gonna say, hey, we're gonna contribute 10% of your wages if we meet company goals that will be reviewed at the beginning of the year. But if you don't meet those goals, then the employee doesn't get anything. Whereas other retirement accounts, simple IRAs, uh, 401ks, those have minimum requirements and basically guaranteed requirements that your employees will get. So it's going to be a big factor with everything there when looking at and talking with your employees. I hope guys you've enjoyed this video. It's been helpful. Like I said, we're going to be continuing talking about um, simple IRAs and 401ks over the next few weeks. So I invite you to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Also, if you found this video useful, go ahead and like and share it and leave a comment. It really helps us get out in front of more people and get a larger presence so that we can help more people just like you. If you have questions or need any help, we're happy to guide you from the financial accounting and tax perspective here at Water for Business Solutions, or we can get you in contact with one of our many financial advisors that we have great relationships with with our clients. You can reach us at 864-351-0852 or give us a call at info at waterfordbusiness.com and we will be happy to assist you there. Have a wonderful rest of your day.